Okay, number nine, engine failure on go around. Uh, this is quite possibly one of the most common procedures I've seen pilots struggle with for a few reasons. And, I, and actually going outside of the playbook here, I personally know somebody who failed a type ride as a result of this. Uh, and it, it really cost them their job. It was very, a very unfortunate situation. Uh, but I bring it up because I know somebody has mentioned on a personal level that this happened to. And of course, I included it in the book so that this doesn't happen to you. Remember what I said earlier, you're flying a jet. It's unpredictable. Expect the hot start. Expect the rejected takeoff. Expect the go around. Expect it. Just be on your A game. Don't let your guard down at all. Always be in that mindset of anything can happen right now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this and why or what some of the reasons are with why pilots struggle with this. Okay, number one, uh, there's five. Okay, the first one is it's low speed situation, right? On a go around, you're at a relatively low speed. You also have a very high thrust setting. And in addition to that, you have a high angle of attack. So these are the first three. Now I'm going to stop there. There's still two more to go. I said there's five, and I've only given you three. But I'm going to stop here because if you're hearing that and it's not yet making sense or jiving, why that would be a bad scenario. Let me share with you why. Okay, so here's your aircraft, right? And imagine that you have an engine failure on the number one engine. And it's not just an engine failure, it's a severe damage because we can conveniently pop the engine off of this thing. <laughs> okay. okay, so we have this engine severe damage where it literally uh, fell off of, of the, uh, uh, the aircraft here. Okay, and you find yourself, here's your aircraft, you're commencing this go around, and the number one thing here is the following. On the approach, would you say you're at a low speed or a high speed? You're pretty much at a low speed, you agree? And so as a result of that, on the go around, you're also at a relatively low speed. Now, not only do you have a low speed, but you're also now transitioning from an approach pitch attitude to a go around pitch attitude. So now you have a low speed scenario coupled together with a high angle of attack as you transition into the missed approach. The third thing here is that you're going to have a high thrust setting because remember, you're not going to go around with a high alpha and a low speed with an approach setting of thrust, right? You're going to have a higher thrust value somewhere in the neighborhood likely of 95 to 98% and one. So put these three things together again, a low airspeed, high angle of attack, and a high thrust setting. And what we're going to find is there's going to be a, a very large yawing moment in the direction of the dead engine. You agree? Now, because of the swept wings, as we saw earlier in this very program, swept wings will make this transport jet susceptible to something called yaw roll coupling. And as a result of having a low speed with a high alpha and a high thrust setting, you're going to have a yaw in the direction of the dead engine, which will couple into a roll. And this is really where uh, you will find yourself rolling in the best case, okay, you'd be rolling outside of the PTS standards. In the worst case, you're rolling fairly aggressively almost to an uncontrolled spin. So the point that I'm looking at here is on that go around, as you transition with two engines running and all of a sudden they fail an engine, now you find yourself in a scenario where your low speed, high thrust, high alpha, yaw roll coupling is going, uh, is working against you at this point. And here's number four and number five that I was mentioning earlier. You have no center line reference and you're usually IMC. So what that means is now this yaw and roll, you have no way to correct it visually outside with a centerline reference, such as what you would have with the V1 cut. And you're also IMC, so you can't look at the horizon outside and plan your directional control accordingly based on that. So you have to do this purely based on instruments, instrumentation inside the cockpit. In the 320, it would be the case of a beta target, slip skid indicator in the case of a 7.3, step on the ball as we so often hear. And remember what I mentioned earlier in this very program, if you see that wing is coming up on you, remember that you don't really have a roll problem, although it's developing into a roll problem, but the whole thing stemmed from a yaw issue. And so the appropriate action here is for an immediate recover as a result of additional rudder pressure. The five items that we just went through here, they lend themselves to creating a potentially difficult scenario if you don't practice them, and particularly if you're not expecting them. And the best thing for you to do in this scenario is focus on the attitude indicator. Stay laser focused on your attitude indicator because you're looking to detect any indication of roll, at which point you will step on that wing that's going up, which really, remember, is to solve a, uh, a yaw problem, not so much a roll problem, because we are susceptible to this yaw roll coupling. Now in the playbook, if you're following along on page 34, there is a illustration of the attitude indicator where it's basically, and again, if you're listening on the audio program, I'm, I'm 
going to put it out here on the board and talk you through what I have. It's basically an indication of the